QCR 5859, State of Texas versus Thomas Henson. Can I have parties approach and announce for the record for the state? Captain Pollard for the state. For the defense. And are you Mr. Henson? Yes. Defense, I'm showing you what's entitled discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review that with your client? We have, Your Honor, and I have. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Henson, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? I do, Judge. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Judge. Mr. Henson, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea bargain agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? Yes. Did you understand that the court would grant your application for deferred adjudication if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could fine you guilty and sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Uh, he has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I do, Judge. Mr. Henson, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea bargain agreement? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Are you a U.S. citizen? Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea bargain agreement, there is to be a $500 fine. There's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon. State recommends deferred adjudication. They will take in consideration the following county court cause numbers, 664461, 664462, 671781. And there's an affirmative finding of family violence. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed... Um, to be designated as primary custodial parent. Did you understand that to be the entirety of the agreement? Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of four years. There'd be 240 hours of community service restitution, TAP evaluation, no harmful or injurious contact with Avilio Walters Torres, that's A-V-I-L-I-O, no firearm possession, hostility, an aggression control course. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the offense that's charged in the indictment, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? State, any evidence? Yes, Judge. State would offer what's been marked as state's exhibit number one. No objection. Mr. Henson, I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? All right, after the end states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? We are, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, at this time, Your Honor. All right, how old are you? 18. 18? So, why are you uh, beating up your stepfather? And mind you, before you speak, I've already read the police report. I was. You need to speak up. I can't hear you. I, don't know. I was just not in my right. I was kind of following like a very. I can't hear you. Open your mouth and speak so I can hear you. I was in. I was. I have kind of like an issue, and I went about it the wrong way. No, because I read the police report. What your issue is that you went to your mom's house where she lives with your stepfather 
you asked your mom if she could stay and you came over there early morning hours. Then you asked your mom for money and it appears she did not want to give you money. So then you called her the B word. And then your stepfather said, don't speak to her that way. And then you proceeded to beat him up. So what was the issue? No, what was the issue? Because people, when you ask people for money, they can either say yes or no. So your mother said no. You called her the B word. Why are you calling your mom that word? I shouldn't have done it. No, I know you shouldn't have done it. But my, my question for you is why did you? I lost my temper, you know. Temper what? Because she wouldn't give you money that was her money? Is that what you lost your temper over? The fact that she said, no, I'm not giving you any money? Do you have a job? So if you want money, and this is what I don't understand about some young people, if you want money, then guess what? You get a job and you earn it. Your mom, your father, your stepfather, your brother, your cousin do not have to give you money. You're of age. Are you in school? So basically you're doing nothing with your life because you're not in school. Do you have a job? So you're not in school. You don't have a job. You're doing nothing with your life and you expect your mother to support you. And you want money. And when she tells you no, she, you call her a B. Where are you living? My and how are you treating your grandfather? And does your grandfather even want you there? Yes, Judge, he has a job interview this week. His grandfather is present in the courtroom today. Um, he is very involved in this case and he does support um, my client and he does want him in that house and he has done everything he can to ensure that um, his grandson is, is taken care of at this point in time. Do you have children? If you're drug tested today, what are the results gonna be? What are you doing with your life other than not working, not in school, calling your mom the B word and beating up your stepfather? Other than that, what are you doing with your life? I have ambition to change my life for the better, Your Honor. I I do want to work at a car wash. That's where my interview is going to be at. And I want to get my GED so that way I could further go to a trade school and become a mechanic. How far did you go in school? I made it to ninth grade. Why did you drop out? I was, I fell into the wrong crowd. And nope. Let me just tell you something about the wrong crowd. If I had some other person standing up before me and they said they fell into the wrong crowd and I asked them, well, who's the wrong crowd? You know what they're going to say? You are. So I don't want to hear this nonsense about I fell into the wrong crowd, because if you are with the wrong crowd, then you are in that subset of wrong crowd and you're a part of the wrong crowd and you are the wrong person. You understand? Sure. Let me see his grandfather. Hello. Are you his grandfather? Step grandfather. Yes. Step grandfather. Could you raise your hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do. All right. You can lower your hand. Could you state your name for the record? Michael Andrew Mirchuk. Okay. I'm sorry. Spell your last name. M-I-E-R-C-H-U-K. All right. So you're the step grandfather. Is your son the stepfather of him? No. Okay. I mean, my, my wife is his grand. Is, that's his grand. Her ah, friend. so your wife is his biological yes. grandmother. Okay. So uh, here's the thing. Does he have rules at your home? Yes, he does. All right. And what are those rules? Right now, his, especially with the monitor on, he can't do anything. We monitor, you know, we basically told him that once the monitor comes off, the rules are going to be no, no drugs, no nothing. He's going to get a job. He's going to get his, you know, we're going to get him into the GED program, however, whatever that awesome way. And uh, hopefully from there, we're going to make sure he gets better. All right. And what is his curfew at your house? He hasn't really had to have one right now, but we're going to stipulate one 10 o'clock at night. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that he needs to do at your house? Do you need him to help clean up? Is that part of his? Chores are going to be, I mean, he's already doing chores. And, uh, his grandmother has already set the rules for what she wants him to do as far as clean up, uh, laundry, things like that for right now until he gets his uh, supposedly. Friday, tomorrow, he's got the job interview and hopefully he'll get the job 
and uh, we'll work from there after that. All right. So you're aware that he did beat up his stepfather? Yes, ma'am. All right. So is there any fear with him being in the house? No, ma'am. All right. Yes. You all know who to call if there's an issue? Yes, ma'am. All right. And I'm assuming, I guess, the GPS, you all have been paying for that? Oh, it's waived? Okay. Yes, Judge. It's kind of an interesting situation. When they impose that GPS monitor, um, he lives within, you know, several hundred yards of the complaining witness in this case. It's just a family dispute. He was not permitted to move in with his grandfather until yesterday, actually, is when we were able to do a carve out from the protective order. So my client had been residing at a short stay um, hotel and his grandfather was going over to visit him and, and take what he needed because he was on house arrest. Okay, well, he's going to remain on GPS and I'm going to give him a 10 p.m. curfew. So you can go out, uh, do your job, uh, interview for jobs. He can do chores, but he needs to be back at his grandfather's house at 10 p.m., no later than that. If okay. you are one minute late without informing probation, What's going to end up happening is the motion for to revoke is going to be filed against you, and you're going to come over to court dressed in orange if you can't make bond, and we'll hear the reason why you're late. Do you understand? All right. Thank you so much for taking him in. Your Honor, if um, there's no violations, let's say within you know 90 days, would the court entertain a removal of the GPS? I'm always willing to entertain whatever motions people bring before me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for clarification, this is tracking only, but he is going to have He's, he has a curfew of 10 p.m. All right, this is what the court is going to do. It's going to be four years deferred adjudication, five hundred dollar fine that will be probated. Take in consideration county court cause number six six four four six one six six four four six two six seven one seven eight one. There's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon and family violence. There's 240 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of the COVID vaccination. Uh, the court is not requiring you to get the COVID vaccination, but you have it, at, including the booster. The court will consider, uh, well, will allow you to waive 40 of those hours. The remaining hours will be waived if you provide uh, proof of your GED, you must pass that. Do you understand? There's going to be proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be, of course, no firearm possession. Uh, we're going to do the hostility and aggression control course. There's a 10 p.m. curfew. So probation outside of work, if he's not at work, he needs to be back in at 10 p.m. Yes, right. He's allowed to be outside the house from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. only. Now, if, like I say, if he has employment and his work schedule is later than that, but he's saying he's working at a car wash, and I know the car wash is closed probably at like 6 p.m. There's to be field visits. two times per month and let probation know to check on the grandparents to make sure that everybody is enjoying uh, Mr. Henson's stay. And he's to reside uh, with his grandparents. There's to be no contact with Avilio Torres. If you want that change, Mr. Torres is gonna have to come in. Your Honor, he's already signed an affidavit of non-prosecution. We've already discussed it on the civil side for their protective order. Um, and we did have the bond already changed to no harm for offensive contact. But if you I'm like not doing no harm for injurious contact because I know what ends up happening. He's married to his mom. He's trying to make the mom happy. But the person before me beat up, and I don't know if it's a senior citizen or not, but he beat up someone who's in a parental role. And that's a big no-no. So if that's going to be lifted, then Mr. Avilio Torres needs to come in here. I'm going to look him in the eye and see and determine whether or not he's doing this just because that's his wife's son. But I have a big concern with a child who's 18, one, calling his mom the B word, 
and two, beating up the stepfather because he tells him, dares to tell him, do not speak to your mother that way. That's a problem. He's all nice and polite to me right now, but I don't know what's happening in that household. So there's to be no contact with the Vilio Taurus. And you can tell the family that Judge Boyd said that he is not to have any contact with him. And it's not a Vilio's fault. I know. And for the record, I'm going to say that a Vilio filed a non-prosecution and that I know that it's been lifted on the other side, but I'm not lifting it here. So you don't have any contact with him. You, you understand? Sure. And if I decide to lift it at some point in time, you had better have your letter of apology and sincerity in that letter for him and for your mom. You only get one mom. You understand? So there's to be no contact with the Bilio Torres. There's to be regular UAs. And there's to be regular reporting uh, by Zoom or in person. Probation, is there anything else he needs? Is there anything else you need for me in order to be successful? All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? And because this is an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right, we can go off the record. Good luck to you. Here's the thing. You better start treating your moms right. Moms don't last forever. They're not going to be on the planet forever. Don't be that person who's in an imitation of life running behind a coffin after you had treated your mom so badly because people are not going to be sympathetic towards you. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. Probation is going to go over your condition. Are you all ready to proceed on the motion? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. All right. Is this going to be contested or no? No, Your Honor. All right. I don't have an... Uh, oh, I do. All right. The court is calling 2022 CR... 5859 State of Texas versus Thomas Nathaniel Henson. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Zach Dunn for the state. For the defense? Catherine Valenzuela. Are you Thomas Henson? Please I'm going to show you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision and state's motion to supplement Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Probation. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes. Are you the same Thomas Nathaniel Henson who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 5859 for the offense of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on September 15, 2022 for a period of four years? Yes, ma'am. State? Your Honor, on or about the 11th day of August 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Thomas Nathaniel Henson, committed the offense of assault in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. State? And Your Honor, there's an agreement. Uh, the other allegations? Uh, there are none, Your Honor. I I, are you waiving? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Any objections to the waivers? No objection to the waivers, Your Honor. All right. Did you understand by plea and true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yeah. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there an agreement? There is, Your Honor. We have an agreed recommendation to continue and uh, for DDRF. That is your understanding, Your Honor. All right. Probation, is that your recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, what is the wait time for DDRF? The wait time is six to 13 weeks. Do we have any other alternatives? All right, but will that address the issue? Because DDRF, I'm assuming there's a mental health issue. And, and Your Honor, that had been the... That had been the first recommendation. Then he did the tap of that, and that's why we got to 
NBRF, but the first recommendation has been ISF cognitive. All right. Sorry. No problem. Um, so yes, the original recommendation was for the state ISF cognitive track, but um, we did an updated tap while he's been in their county, and um, the recommendation changed for BBRF due to the mental um, testing. All right. So the new number one, who is the complainant? I mean, what is the relationship? She's my girlfriend. Girlfriend. All right. And are we doing no contact with the girlfriend? I believe there had been. She did sign an affidavit of non prosecution We did um, enter a plea to proceed with the treatment that he believes he does need, Your Honor. All right. So I'm going to order no contact with that person. And then once his mental health is stable, we'll do something different. Do you understand? I'm sorry. You need to speak yes. up. All right, so do you have anyone else that you can live with? Uh, Mother? I, I wasn't just living with her. She was living with me. I mean, she was staying with me. Okay, you're mumbling. I can't understand. I can't hear you in the court report. I can't hear you. I, I wasn't living with her. I was. She was staying okay. with me. So. All right, so I do you have I'll, your own place? Yeah. So who I'll are you living with? Yes, sir. I was staying with my grandma. All right, so you need to stop inviting people to live with your grandmother when she's already have you living with her. You understand? Mm -hmm. So were you supporting yourself at all or were you just dependent upon your grandmother? I mean, I wasn't paying rent, but I wasn't. Were you working? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sometimes. So that means that you're not bringing in a stable income and you're bringing somebody else into your grandmother's house. That's a big no-no. You understand? Yes. All right, probation, anything with Center for Healthcare Services or? Your Honor, I think. And I know that the state waived and abandoned the other, the other um, allegations. However, we, he last reported to probation in March. So that's a concern for us. Um, Right before he absconded, he did produce one negative UA. The others were positive. He did not complete his hostility, hostility management course that was originally mandated. Um, I think our concern would be that he would abscond again without actually getting the help that is necessary. All right. Do you want to go to prison? Because we can do that. Then why are you behaving as though you want to go to prison by not reporting? That's the easiest thing on the planet to do. You're obviously not working, really. So you're just watching television with your grandmother or something or putting a burden on her where she has to feed you and then you're bringing a girlfriend into the house. That seems like all you were doing and not doing well on probation. Do you want to go to prison for up to 20 years? All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'll deny the motion. There should be no contact with the complainant, whatever her name is, give that to probation. So the complainant and, and condition number one, you are not to have any contact with her. Do you understand? Yes, so as far as your probation is concerned, that relationship is over. Do you understand? Yes, do you have any children with her? Yes. So that relationship is over. If you end up violating my order and having contact with her, you could potentially go to prison for 20 years. Do you understand? Yes, and we're going to do state ISF cognitive and substantive track. And then we'll see where that leaves us. Okay. Your Honor, I do want to point out that the way that state ISF is being ran now, it's not a double track anymore. It's either one or the other. We'll do cognitive. Thank you, Judge. And then after that, when he's released, we'll put him on GPS, partial for work until further notice and you to reside at your grandmother's house. You understand? Oh. And your honor for Mr. Hanson's benefit, what are you looking for or what is the court looking for so that he could get off GPS? I mean, just so that he knows like if he's always reporting, attending. Oh, he needs to show me that he's actually taking this probation seriously. 
if you're not taking it seriously, what's going to end up happening is a motion to revoke is probably going to be filed. And instead of you worried about GPS, you'll be looking at potentially 20 years in prison. Do you understand? Yes. All right. And see uh, probation if those fees can be waived. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome.